Welcome back to the channel. We are going on the river, heading from Stratford-upon-Avon down to Tewkesbury, which is about 40 miles. We're taking about a week or so over that. And then from Tewkesbury, doing about 13 miles down to Gloucester. Now, we don't expect that the River Avon is going to offer too many challenges. It's a small river compared to the River Severn, which is tidal. So there's a few things we want to do to prepare to make sure we're safe and got everything ready that we need for rivers. So here goes. So I've got the life jackets out, ours and the doggies. I've done the engine checks, which is basically checks that you'd do on a car, really just oil, coolant, check the fan belts are okay, check for any leaks of oil, etc. And uh, the next job, which is a crucial job, no boater in the world enjoys doing this. And uh, that is getting your hands down in the prop to see if there's any rubbish there. But there is a great satisfaction when you do this and you realise there's nothing there. Fantastic. So it's just a matter of undoing the clamp, lifting up the hatch and getting your hands in there. So let's see. So I've got the hatch lid out. And as you can see, it's pretty murky down there. But if we were in the Bahamas, you'd be able to see the prop in that cool blue waters. But no, you can't see anything, so you've got to get your hands in. So after much huffing and puffing and effing and jeffing, that was what was wrapped around the prop. But also great satisfaction knowing you've got that off and there is now nothing there. See how long that lasts. So I've replaced the cover put the clamp back on and I've just got to tighten it up. There's a big debate about how much you tighten up the clamp. Lots of people use lump hammers to finish it off, but I was told just tighten it up as hard as you can with your hands. So having got all the plastic out from the prop shaft, what I like to do now is start the engine, put it into gear forwards and backwards, get the prop rotating at a good pace, just to check there's no water coming through the hatch. All seems good. Just give it one more check with my hands and uh, oh, I've lost the, lost the broom in the canal. We'd better get that out. After recovering the uh, broom from the canal, now where was I? Yeah, I've just given it another check. It's all tight, ready to go. Just got to get one more thing done. Let's get the anchor out. As with everything on an narrow boat, you end up moving stuff from one place to another to get at what you need to get at. So I had to move all those bags of wood out and the trolley, ropes and various other nuts and sods. And I finally got the anchor. We're river ready. I've written the emergency numbers down for the river associations. So uh, we're ready to go. Fran's just come back from shopping and uh, I think I'll have a cup of coffee first. beautiful location overlooking the lock on the River Avon, the Holy Trinity Church is where Shakespeare is buried. There is a curse written on his tomb should anybody interfere with it. By 1875 all navigation had ceased on the Upper Avon and in 1969, under the leadership of David Hutchins, MBE, restoration work began. And in 1974, the upper navigation between Evesham and Stratford was open to boats. 
an incredible achievement by total volunteer labour. Different again, always lovely to be back on the rivers. It's really pretty, isn't it? Yeah. Amazing. Uh, lovely gardens, interesting boats that you pass. Um, it's Some scary. Going faster than others. Yeah, yeah. There seems to be a bit of a thing about going fast on this river. Well, it's, it's not much wider than the canals here, anyway, and there's not much flow. No, there's no flow. It's a lot deeper than the canal, so hence we're not wearing our jackets because we feel we're okay. And, uh, but I think the River Seven might be a bit different, so we'll definitely suit up down there. Yeah. But it's stunning, absolutely beautiful. We're hoping that we might see otters because we did hear one last night in Stratford, um, but we've not seen it. But we think it's probably really good otter country, don't you think? I do, yeah. The locks are pretty uh, hard going. Yeah. Double width gates, and we have to leave them open upon exiting. So whether that's going up or coming down, you leave the gates open when you exit. But for us this morning, it's meant that every lock, the top gates have been open, so you've had to go and close them first, then come down and open the paddles. It's taken a while, hasn't it? But yeah. the thing is, you just take it really slowly on river. And, um, well, we do, don't we? And yeah. take our time and enjoy it. So. When we get on the River Seven and it's a lot wider, I'll just give the engine a bit of a thrash. So apparently it's good to, uh, get the revs up for about 10 or 15 minutes so uh, that's when you're not passing any boats or uh, creating a wash that will damage the bank so you pick your times carefully but yeah beautiful beautiful and uh, whoa we're doing about seven miles today or something like that yeah we were expecting to moor up at the next lock we might possibly go a bit further we'll see how we feel when we get there but um all good all good. Have we found the most beautiful mooring spot ever? We have said that before, <laughs> I know, but I think we've done it this time. It might not have, well it has a fantastic outlook, but it might not have the views, but it's the feeling, the atmosphere here, it's absolutely wonderful, isn't it? It's just so peaceful. We've had it to ourselves, another boat has now joined us, but we had it to ourselves last night. Um, a little bit of greenery and space. I've done yoga out here this morning. It's just been lovely, isn't it? There's a couple of permanently moored boats in front of us, nobody on them. And we're in the village of Luddington, and that's Luddington Lock behind us here on the River Avon. And the River Avon just keeps giving and giving. We've only been on it for a day. <laughs> Not <laughs> <It's> even that. <laughs> absolutely stunning. It really is. So, and so peaceful, there's hardly any flow on the river, is there? No. So it's relaxing. The locks, as we've said before, I think are a bit hard work, but... but it's, they're very um, slow, the locks, but hey-ho. Yeah. So we managed to do all of three miles yesterday from Stratford-on-Avon. <laughs> when we saw this, we were going to go through the lock, but we reversed back and just moored here and uh, stayed the night. We are only allowed 24 hours here. Yeah, that's the only downside of it, isn't because it? Because we but... could easily spend a week here, just mooching about. So today we're going to Bidford and Avon. So that is about six miles away and four locks. So 
so not a huge amount to do. We've got to, to be honest, we've got to get off this um, river by Monday next week. It's Wednesday today. So Monday next week, we've got to be off this river because you're going babysitting. Yeah, I'm going to look after granddaughter for a couple of days. Yeah, down mm. in uh, Hertfordshire. And I'm not happy to leave Rich on a, well, it's, it's, I'm happy to leave him on the river, but you can only stay on most of the moorings for 24 hours. I'm away a little bit longer than that, which means he'd have to do locks on his own on the river, which yeah. neither of us are happy about, really. I've never actually so. done a lock solo. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you have, but not big ones like I've this. Never done, no, I've never done a lock solo. I've done oh. a, a, a lift bridge solo. Yeah. But no, never done a lock solo, and there's, I, I don't intend to either. <laughs> We're not frightened of it, but especially with these river locks, if you don't have to do them on your own, then don't. You know, no, it's just... absolutely. So we went for a little walk today. The footpath takes you through somebody's garden just there, and there's a beautiful little church, um, but it's too early in the morning, so that church is, is closed. And uh, so, yeah, that's it. A fantastic spot. And also, the walk we did yesterday, we've met a, lo a couple of local people in the oh, village, yeah. which was so, they were so friendly and so chatty and really interesting people. One of them was actually involved in helping out with the restoration of this canal. Yeah. Um, so much interesting information and really lovely people, friendly and welcoming. It's so nice, so nice. The restoration occurred in the early 70s and there was this, this uh, section from Evesham to Stratford-upon-Avon was opened by her, the Queen Mother back in 1974. And they used um, convicts, didn't they, if that's the word? Yeah. From local, well, not local prisons, one was from Colchester prison and the Borstall boys from I don't know where, but uh, apparently they, they really enjoyed the, the getting out of the prison and actually doing some physical work and, and making something happen, which is what should be the case these days, but I'm not sure if it is. Not politically correct, maybe. Maybe. But knows? the guy that we spoke to yesterday said that when they actually opened the canal and had the ceremony, um, a lot of the prisoners all came back all dressed up because they were so proud to have taken part in this work. Um, and obviously they'd all got skills of welding yeah. or carpentry, things that were needed for the work. So I don't know. It seems to me that everybody benefited, but that's it just was a our different opinion. time then, wasn't it? 1974, that's yeah. 50 years ago. Yeah. Luminec. Yeah. Right, anyway, let's stop waxing lyrical. Yeah. We've got locks to do, journey to do, and uh, enjoyment to Yeah, have. And so reluctantly, we're off. Goodbye, Luddington. <laughs> Today's journey is just three and a half miles and three locks, snaking our way around the village of Welford on Avon to the lock at Barton. Walking on the River Avon is quite strenuous activity and thankfully there are only 17 locks to be worked. After leaving the lock, whether you're going up or whether you're coming down, you have to leave the lock gates open. This makes it a bit more hard work when you're approaching the lock, you have to close two gates before you can then operate the paddles at the end you're entering.
how was your first lock? It was fine. They're really difficult locks and I think I had the most difficult one mm. that we've had so far. Because it had the bent arms on it. Beams. Beams, that's the one. Which are always harder to push. But I'm here. I did it. A new place for the dogs to sniff. These uh, moorings just before the locks are fantastic. So if it's painted blue on the posts, you can moor here. Some are 48 hours, some are 24 hours. This one's not marked. The small town of Bidford's about half a mile or so that way. There are moorings there, but uh, we didn't want to chance it going through the lock just to find out the, there's no moorings left. So we've pulled in here and very nice it is too. So. Uh, this will do us for a night and we'll go exploring into Bidford either this afternoon or tomorrow morning. Thanks again for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you'd like to support the channel there are various ways you can just check the description below or for more information visit floatingourboat.com. See you all on the next one. Bye.